how, as a voter, an UMA voter, how would you validate an across V2 identifier price request? And the two cases that we'll go over is one where you are able to run a JavaScript script and you trust Risk Labs um, that they built the script honestly and conforming to the um, to the spirit of the UMIP and it's implementing it correctly. Um, and then the second case is where you don't trust Risk Labs at all and you want to independently verify it completely from first principles. Um, so well, let's first pull up the across v2 UMIP. Let me. For reference, the across v2 UMIP is UMIP 157. Um, and so in the first case where you're willing to run a script written by Risk Labs, so you're implicitly trusting Risk Labs is um, honest, uh, the script you're going to be running would be implementing the validation logic in this UMIP. And so the very high level um, thing that you're verifying is the, val the validity of a root bundle in across v2. So the way across v2 works is like in any time window, so let's just call this like a generic time window from time zero to time now, um, the bundle should be a Merkle root containing all of the deposit and fill events in that window. And it gives the UMIP gives you a set of rules for how you should construct that root given that set of events. So the first assumption is that you're looking at the same set of events. Um, the second assumption is that you then take that set of events and construct these, these roots correctly. And the roots tell you, for example, say there were like two deposits on optimism and one refund, one fill on mainnet, but that filler wanted to be repaid on Arbitrum, yada, yada. Like there's all this like logic here. How should the flow of funds be between the hub pool and the different spoke pools and also and and also who should be repaid like which of the relayers should be repaid for correctly relaying a deposit okay cool so then the the script that you're trusting is is trusting that the script is correctly looking over any given window and and looking up all the events in that window and constructing this thing so it's actually it's so I'd say your average window, you're talking about like 200, 300 different events. Each of those events is either a deposit, like a user who wants to bridge from one L2 to another, or a relayer who tried to fill it. And the relayer is, uh, by the way, the relayer is like out funds for this time. So, so the bundle is necessary to repay the relayer. So it's actually pretty, it's pretty hard to do by hand, which is why we have a script, but it's, it's completely possible if you follow the unit. I'm going to go to a cross protocol repo. And you're going to go to the relay, relayer v2. And the script is going to be in scripts. Actually, no, it's not. Weirdly, it's going to be in source scripts validate root bundle. So let me send that to you. Um, so this is the script that it's going to run. And the, the, the way that this is going to work is it's going to use the same logic that um, is used in the risk labs implementation of the relayer or the data worker to mm -hmm. to to validate a bundle. So if the bundle was constructed with the same code that the data worker is using, then it should be a valid bundle. And if mm -hmm. it was it, if the data if the root bundle was constructed differently, it could still very well be a, a valid root bundle. But um, this is this this is what the script is used for. So the script is going to basically it's going to make a bunch of Web3 requests and look up, look up all these events, and then it's going to run the logic and it's going to, going to con construct these these routes correctly. So the way you actually run it is, let me present my other screen. Um, all right, can you see this screen? All right. So say say so. I'm in the um, I'm in the relayer v2 folder right now, and I'm gonna go. So to run this script, um, you're gonna pass in a request time. So the request time is when the um, when the root bundle proposal was sent on chain, or actually, usually this request time is when the root bundle proposal was was um. Did I was just stop you there? Yep. Um, right. 
how do you know that time? Is that in the transaction? Yeah, so that time is the the timestamp of the it's the timestamp anytime after the the bundle was proposed on chain. And usually like you can take the timestamp of the dispute because the dispute came right after the root bundle proposal, but is before the next one. Because one of the assumptions in the whole system is you can only have one pending root bundle at a time. So like the timeline might be proposed one then gets disputed and then the next one can be proposed. So which if you pass in the dispute time, the script will always look back to the to the preceding root bundle. So that way the script knows exactly which one to validate. Okay. So then if you run this, so this is the exact command. Um, so you pass in the time that's proposed and then you run the script, validate root bundle. Um, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna log it out right now. It's gonna take about, can take a couple minutes, but I'll, I'll go through like all the logs if you want. Mm -hmm. So a lot and of this code, can, yep. Can I stop you again? It doesn't matter which chain um, the dispute was on. This, the same script is used for any chain. Yes, but the dispute, remember the root bundles are proposed on mainnet and they're disputed on mainnet, but they, they okay. technically, contain data from all the different chains. So if a single deposit is missing, so say like I proposed a root bundle, and this has actually happened in the past where someone proposed a root bundle and missed a single deposit event, your whole root is different. So this script is going to, it's gonna compare what it thinks is the correct root against what was proposed on chain. And if they disagree, it's just gonna, it's gonna tell you whether it's correct or not. And so the, one of the hard parts about V2 versus V1, in V1, every single relay was disputed. So you would sort of, you could sort of like isolate exactly what the issue was. Like say some relays got disputed, some didn't, like, you know, that relay was either valid or not. In, in V2, the whole route might be, off. the whole route's different, but that might just mean one event is off. So there's a bit more like forensics involved to figure out what exactly was wrong. But if you just want to know what to vote, you would just run the script against the disputed proposal and it would tell you whether it's valid or not. And it's only valid if the roots match. And the roots can only match if the events are correct. The events are, sorry, if the events match exactly and the logic that takes the events and creates the roots is the same. Okay. So, so while this is running, um, I guess we can talk about the case where you don't want to run the script. The way you don't want to run the script is you would read through that UMIP and you would um, you would reconstruct you'd reconstruct the root command. Um, I don't think that that's really involved. I don't think anyone realistically is going to do that. I think what we'll see longer term is we'll see alternate um, implementations of the script, um, and and people will just be able to run their own script actually. So the way the UMIP works is, first of all, figuring out what block range to look at. So like for any given, so in this root bundle, let's say we were, so I passed in this time. This, this time here is um, about four or five days ago. So four or five days ago, there was some root bundle that was proposed. Um, mm -hmm. And so the log is here, validating most recently proposed root bundle before request time. And so it's going to fetch a, at some point it's going to, okay, good. It found, it found the root bundle. So this is the transaction hash that was proposed. And you'll notice at that root bundle that was proposed, um, there was some sort of a, let's, let's look at the exact event that, was, that we're gonna validate. Let's look at this event. So, so this proposed root bundle event is technically all the data you need to like, that you need to validate. You're validating this entire event. So this proposed root bundle says at this timestamp, so four four days ago, five days ago, um, a root bundle was proposed with um, this. This is a root. This is a root, and this is a root. So th this is called a pool rebalance root. The pool mm -hmm. rebalance root tells you how to move funds between the hub pool and the spoke pool. So it's either sending stuff to the spoke pool to repay relayers there, or it's pulling back stuff from the spoke pool to re re repay relayers in the hub pool. Mm -hmm. The relayer re refund route is telling you which refunds exactly we're going to send. So 
they the, the relay refund leverage and the pool rebalancer sort of work in tandem because the pool rebalancer is sending funds the relay refund is actually figuring out what to do with the funds and then the slow relay yeah. route contains all of the slow fills that we have to send to the different chains so say someone flagged a slow fill on optimism the slow relay route would contain a payment to optimism to to re, to, to pay back um the mm -hmm. recipient there and so these these routes are com would completely change if even a single event changed um, in in the time in the time window that we're talking about. Now, now to figure out the time window, you use this thing called the bundle evaluation block numbers, and they're um, as a rule they're ordered in mainnet, optimism, polygon, boba, and Arbit arbitrum. And so that is the last block that you're going to look up for those different chains, and that exact. Um, that exact ordering of chain IDs is actually hard coded in the UMIP as a rule. So mm -hmm. it says like the bundle evaluation block numbers must always come in this order from, as networks and they mm -hmm. represent the, the end block of, of the block range that you're gonna look up. And mm -hmm. the exact block range you're gonna look up is the bundle evaluation block number here mm -hmm. in this event to the bundle evaluation block number in the last event. So there's some logic in the UMIP that tells you how to find the exact Pre preceding proposed root bundle, whose bundle evaluation block numbers you're gonna you're gonna set as the start block for this range. That's at a minimum like two hours ago, since the challenge window is two hours. Um, mm -hmm. Usually it's longer, like four or six hours. So that's like four or six hours of events. Usually there's like 200, 300 different deposit fill events, which are used to construct this pool route and the and the relay refund route. So the pool route is constructed by taking all of the deposits across all the different spoke pools mm -hmm. and 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 you start off you start off thinking that you want to pull those you want to pull those funds back to the hub pool so there's um so say there's like some amount that we want to send to the different chains that amount starts negative based on the amount of deposits that we're pulling back then you add in all the refunds that take place on those chains as a positive number so it's minus deposits plus refunds then, then you have to do then plus slow fills, any slow fills you need to send to the chain. And then there's some other smaller edge cases, which aren't really important at a high level, but that's the basic, that's why it's so important to get every single deposit and fill, right? Because that exact amount is, is contributing to this like random route that we're talking about here. So if that amount is even off by like one way, that whole route's going to change. So yeah. And so, and then the relayer refund route is a list of every single fill event and the amount to send back to the chain. Usually a lot of these fills take place on mainnet. So like a very typical pool rebalance route will pull money from Optimism, Boba, Polygon, Arbitrum, and then send money to mainnet to, re to refund the relayer there. The, the last thing I guess to talk about is the challenge period ed step. That, that is when this um, root bundle can no longer be challenged. So you, at the contract level, you couldn't even call dispute if it's past this time. Um, but there's, um, yeah. So the, the, I guess that's kind of irrelevant for a dispute. But that's um, oh, also pool rebalance leaf count tells you how many leaves there are in the pool rebalance route. So you know how I was saying each of the spoke pools either sends money or receives money to the hub yeah. pool. There is a possibility where one of the one of the pools, like say Boba, has very little volume and actually has no activity, like neither deposits or refunds on that chain, and then it might not even be included. Um, so in that case, like that, the Boba chain might not have a leaf. So we might only have a leaf for Optimism, Arbitrum, Polygon, and Mainnet, and that's four full rebalances. And the reason why we have to count them is because this whole route is represented as this as the string and the string like we really don't know if we don't know how many leaves to expect we can never reconstruct the same route again um yeah and so that's the the UMIP is like a much longer version of of that but that's like the general procedure that the script is um is is following so i would i would say something like risk labs implemented this script that follows the unit and the script mm -hmm. returns like zero or one and sometimes there's a bit more color about why the dispute happened like you remember some disputes like I said like I'm pretty sure because we ran the proposer and we were saying we 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 were the ones who proposed the bundle so we could look back through our logs and figure out what was proposed and then on the validation side what was the difference but if we don't know who the proposer is and they don't reveal their logs then we'll never know what they saw that we didn't all we can know is that we saw something different 
the, the nice thing is like even if you sort of trust risk labs and you're willing to run the script the code's all open source so you mm -hmm. could reconstruct you can look exactly through the script and see what it's doing so that's like a little bit less like completely trusting risk labs it's not a complete black box it's like obviously like it's obscure and complex but the code is technically all out there just go over the the script output so okay you'll see a you'll see a log like finish loading data and mm -hmm. then it'll print you out like every single deposit um the token the, the direction and then every single valid fill blah 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 and these all feed down into the roots and then you'll get a log that's like the validation results. So um, the pending root bundle matches with the expected, and, and that's all you need to know. Like it, then it's valid. And if anything is different, you'll see a different log. Like it doesn't match, and then you vote zero. Yeah.